Penny's death was a transformative moment. It changed the show from a lighthearted, fun series about kids fighting bad guys between classes to a show about warriors fighting a secret holy war against the forces of evil herself. And now she's back, which really should be a good thing, but I don't think any of us are really expecting a uh, happy ending for Penny right now. Especially considering the fact they're going up against a master hacker who is also... scientist. Uh, technically, I was also the doctor. Which to me means there is a fairly high chance that he actually had something to do with creating Penny. And will almost certainly end up hacking her by the end of the volume, taking control of her, and sicking her on the people of Mantle to, to make them fear and hate Alice even more, bring in the Grimm and just kill everyone there. You know, while also stealing the relic and capturing the maiden, whatever the heck else they want to do while they're there. But Atlas is definitely going to end up crashing to the ground, and Penny is going to be the cause of it. I also have a fairly good idea when this is going to happen. According to this one little uh, billboard you see in the hall outside of Ironwood's office, she's going to get the Employee of the Month Award on Monday. Which just seems like an absolutely perfect time for her to go crazy and start killing people. And alas, once more, Penny will die, but not as a carefully orchestrated accident. Instead, she will be killed by her bestest friend in the whole wide world. In order to stop her friend from rampaging out of control and killing the very people she swore an oath to protect, Ruby is going to kill Penny. And I will cry. But I don't think that's going to be the end of Penny's story, and I have a fairly... Interesting theory on how she's going to end up surviving all this. But before I do that, I first have to establish that Penny is based on Pinocchio. Now I could probably just find an interview with the creators where they said that very thing, or just say, she's obviously Pinocchio, but it's more fun for me if I go through the steps. Well, to start with the very basics, Penny sounds pretty close to Pinocchio, so there's that. Next we can look at their respective fathers. Uh, Pinocchio's father is Geppetto, and Penny's father is Pietro. Geppetto, Pietro, Geppetto, Pietro, Geppetto, Pietro. Hell, they even rhyme. And if you want even more proof, uh, you can just look at the guy's shelf. There is a freaking whale on his shelf. As in Monstro, the whale that ate Geppetto and Pinocchio and a whole lot of them. Yeah, that took me uh, more than one viewing to notice. But I really like that little detail back there. All right, next up, let's figure out who Jiminy Crick would be in this situation. Now, Jimmy Cricket is Pinocchio's conscious, his morals, the person who keeps him on the right track and makes sure he doesn't wander off. Does that sound like anyone we know? CL! So yeah, my theory here is that CL was based on Jiminy Cricket and is supposed to be uh, Penny's conscious in a way. Weird, but I like that theory. I'm also going to say she was probably supposed to return in this volume. Like They had plans for her, but then they ended up scrapping and saying, okay... Uh, now Winter's her straight man, because Winter seems to be taking that same role, you know, calming her down, uh, keeping her from being too overly active and stuff like that, so... So that's a pretty interesting change. I'm saying Winter is now a cricket. And because I've just gone completely mad with power, I'm also going to argue that Watts and Tyrion are supposed to be Honest John and Gideon, respectively. Gideon, Tyrion, Gideon, Tyrion, they kind of rhyme. And I'm so convinced of this, I challenge you in the comment section to fight me on this. And this just leaves the most important character in the story, next to Pinocchio, of course. The Blue Fairy, the one who turns Pinocchio into a real boy. That's right. My theory is that they are going to turn Penny into a human girl this volume, or possibly next volume. I'm not sure how long they're going to be in Atlas. Now, I'm sure you're asking, but Just King, where, oh, where would they find a Blue Fairy? Well, Jin's pretty close. She's blue, but she's a genie, not a fairy. I mean, it makes sense, you know, a genie comes out of a magical lantern. I mean, if you wanted to find a blue fairy, you'd probably have to look inside a magic wand or staff. Like, perhaps, the Staff of Creation? What if the spirit residing the Staff of Creation is a blue fairy? I mean, you could certainly argue that the lantern is special and unique and that it has a spirit inside it because it needs to answer questions. But that spirit doesn't actually need, like, a full body to do that. It could just be, like, a voice from inside the lantern. So would it make sense if all the relics had spirits inside them? Some way to guide the person who finds it, tell them, 
hey, you have three wishes, or you can make this, or, hey, my power is that I can turn everyone's hair pink. Go crazy. So here's what I think is going to happen. Ruby is going to kill Penny. And for whatever reason, they can't just put her in a new body. Either the facilities were all destroyed or her core was damaged or corrupted in a certain way where her dying means she's really permanently dead this time. But Ruby can't allow it to end this way. She can't allow her friend to die like this. Not again. Not for all she's been through. This time, she's going to find a way to save her. And thus, she is going to use the Staff of Creation and the Blue Fairy sealed within it to create a new human body for Penny. But I seriously doubt the Staff of Creation can, you know, bring back the dead because that would just make it way too OP and way too dangerous. And seriously, if she has that power, wouldn't she revive Summer or Pura or whoever else along with her? No, instead, I think the body that she creates with it will be soulless and empty and a husk, essentially. So from there, they just need to find some sort of device or machine that could transfer Penny's aura, her soul, from her broken, dying machine body to a human host. In this case, the empty shell the staff of creation just made. But I mean, where in the world would they be able to find a device capable of doing something like that? Oh, right! They already have one! The aura transfer machine that they tried to use on Pyrrha and the Fall Maiden back in Volume 3. This was almost certainly Atlesian technology. And I'm guessing uh, Ironwood still has it rattling around the basement somewhere, specifically because he's worried about them losing the Winter Maiden when she eventually dies. It was stated earlier on that she's no spring chicken, so I'm assuming he's preparing for the worst, preparing for a moment where she's not around anymore and they need to make sure the power goes to someone they can trust next. I mean, Raven killing the Spring Maiden was kind of a uh, gamble on her part because there's no way to say for certain that the powers would have gone, you know, to her instead of someone else she was thinking about, her mother back home, her sister, long lost lover that she's been trying to find. Ironwood would need a way to make sure that the powers go to the person he wants them to go to. So yeah, that's my theory. The volume is going to end, or next volume is going to end, with Penny becoming a real girl and Atlas falling out of the freaking sky. As for what happens after that, I'm actually fairly curious. I don't think Penny's going to retain her full power that she had as, you know, a killer robot. But she'll definitely retain some of her Huntress abilities, her ability to manipulate ore and stuff like that. Though she'll need to train a lot to get to a level up to Team Ruby. I mean, another reason I think this has to happen is just because Penny is a little too OP right now. We've barely even seen her put any effort into it, and yet she's easily obliterated Grimm with like a flick of her wrist. And she can freaking fly! So yeah, this is going to turn Penny into a real girl, a human girl. And it's going to make her a little less OP. So that's my thoughts. And then she's going to follow along with Team Ruby to their next spot, wherever that's going to end up being. And that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think about all this down below. Do you think Penny's going to end up getting hacked and attacking the city she's sworn to protect? Do you think Ruby will have it in her to really kill her best friend? And and if that happens, do you think she'll make that decision to use the staff of creation to bring back her friend? The Staff of Creation almost certainly has some limits on it and how often it can be used, what it can do, and whatnot. So bringing back Penny could really end up damaging them in the long run, making it so that they can't use the Staff down the road when they really need it. But I don't think she's willing to go through that all again. So I think that no matter what it takes, she'll find a way to save Penny. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think about all that. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss my next video. And until then, peace!